made a bad mistake. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. And yes, I know these are cracked Marlin sat on them. Today, you might recognize some of these very famous rigs. We're out here in San Hollow um, celebrating Matt's Off-Road Recovery 1 million subscribers. He went ahead and flew four people out from all over the world and we're going to see San Hollow in style. What do we have here? Is someone stuck? That's <laughs> it. That's it. He's done, guys. He's done. <laughs> oh. Banana that's saying nope to whatever situation Matt has going on down there. Check that out. It's like clay. He's almost out. He's gonna do it. He's trying to reposition himself and then send it to the moon. So it's literally clay, guys. Like the entire tire is just caked on with this red clay. He's going back, he's going forward. He has motion, so he's not stuck. He's trying to get out, but as soon as he accelerates, he falls back into the grooves that he made, reversing to the position that he's going from. The bananas getting ready, positioning themselves to pull the Morver out of there. And even though that looks dry over there, that's exactly what that looked like. Where it's only dry at the very, very top, the crust, everything below that is, is, is all that red clay. We are off to a great start. This is amazing, watching a recovery in person. Not just any recovery, but recovering Matt. Matt, what are you doing? <laughs> what did you do? I attempted to clean mud off my windshield. I don't know how to do it because I never have to do that kind of stuff. <laughs> it's only been about 20 minutes in the trail. I made a bad mistake. Oh, poor Lizzie. That's her wedding gift. So I'm decked out in basically winter gear with a buff and a jacket. Marlin still has not um, attached the windshield to the JL. So I'm driving and all that dust in the sun and everything's hitting me pretty hard. So I'm gonna try to keep all this gear on for as long as possible, protect us from the sun and the dust. Okay, so coming up right here, it's called the toll booth. So this is the first one and Matt just told me it's the hardest. So this is the one we're gonna start doing. Job. So these obstacles can really change just depending on how the sand stacks. Sometimes this could be full of sand and you could drive a stock car through it. Not very often, but with as much traffic as it's getting it's dug out a lot. That was the hardest one? Well, out of the three. Okay. Okay, now um, you gotta go sharp that way. Turn, turn drive and back it up. Again, the banana is up. doing oh. it. So he's backing up to reposition and kind of try the line again with more momentum and kind of come through and stay through. <laughs> you can totally do it. Nope. I broke my front differential right here because the bottom rubs. Uh -huh. So I was sliding it along the bottom and it lift the front tires off the ground and then they <laughs> slap. So Marlon, I've got, I've got Posy in the back of both of these. 
So I got, I run a, a Grizz, Yukon Grizzly in the front, and then, so I just never have to think about lockers. There's really nothing to fail. Yeah, that's a good idea. I and they're not, they're not rock crawlers. Yeah. I'm we just have a spool on the rear locker. And then like um, the Yukon, we have a, a Grizzly, no, in the front? Yeah, yeah. yeah. same, so non-selectable. Yeah, just, uh, they're just, just don't think about them. I get in situations like that, and then and then it's, on it's a problem. Yeah, but not very often. <laughs> How did that feel? It felt awesome. <laughs> okay, we got a little bit of a long drive to get to the maze. We'll stop at the maze next. Let's do it. So I lied. I lied to Luna. I told her that the maze was a seven. Why do they always do that? It's an eight. So Moab ten. That's or what we're so going they say. with. Yep. Ask me after we get out what I think. What's a ten in Moab? What's one? What's a ten trail there? Is it? Is it Pritchett a ten? I think yeah. the Pritchett is a nine. The nine? Pritchett's a nine. I'm pretty sure. So you can kind of compare it to Pritchett. There's, okay. there, Pritchett isn't the like winching necessary on one one or two spots or can you make it through without winching? Yeah, yeah, you can make it without yeah, winching. winching yeah. Make, it, make it through here without winching. I think the terror level is higher on this one. Oh, wonderful. All right, keep, keep the commentary until I'm on the trail. for the win. We're going to be fine. That's it. That's a buggy line, right? Yeah. Okay. So behind you here is you gotta be nuts. And you can totally do it, but you've got it, there's a technique to it. Um, you, you're basically spinning your tires the whole way and you're not really letting off the throttle. You have to let off the throttle a couple times in the middle of it. So I've, ne that? I've never done it. Okay. Are I we think, doing it today? I think, I think you should. You think I should? And then there's, this one's worth getting out. Okay. Let's, let's show you these. So you got to carry a little speed up it. A little. And then you can see, you can see like when you, if you carry too much speed, then that's where you wheelie over backwards. Like at that top lip, that lip is three quarters of the way up. And then this is, you got to be totally nuts. So this one's harder? Yes. It looks totally not. <laughs> Let's let me stand next to this. Okay, I gotta get out of the sun. So this is the bottom of. You gotta be totally nuts. This is a what, like a ten foot, like. Yeah. I can't. I'm not strong enough. That's crazy. And, um, what do you think? Are you going to try or not? Nah, I'll try it in my dreams. <laughs> not about to endo on the first trail in Sand Hollow. You gotta be nuts. If you do it, 
Oh! oh! <laughs> Not as good to Listen, we're, I'm going to be here for two weeks. You okay. sleep on it. I'll sleep on it. Oh, no. no. <laughs> oh, Look no, he's walking. Now no. Oh, no. Now or never. Oh, my God. How do you get to this? Yeah, if you can walk up it, you can crawl up it. Luna, I think you might have gotten yourself into something. <laughs> Oh, no. See how easy you're climbing? You got it. Let's go see how this feels. So, I told him that if he tried it or did it, then I would try and do it. So, what do you think, Matt? I think I need a helmet. <laughs> you need one? We have one. Put a helmet on. this because I'll you'll see the bypass. You, Can the I bypass, park here? Am yeah, I in a good you're spot fine. Park? The bypass is not a chicken's way out on this particular. Uh, oh, so this. Okay. So, so you what was the what was the name of this? Uh, you gotta be nuts. And you're not. I mean, my name is Luna, and it's short for lunatic. So. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. It did not feel honestly that sketchy. It did let up a little bit, and so you're gonna see that. And then as soon as like I felt the cheap stop, I was like, oh no shouldn't have done that and then I like really committed and like just kind of saw it through but that was awesome really uh, I'm proud of the the rig I'm proud of myself I'm proud of Matt he's never wanted to do it and um, I got him to do it guys with the back wheels exactly the same time I'm fine with the front but the the van is gonna walk right up there. Keep going. Wait. You're fine. Perfect. Oh. Inches away. Good job.
there. Do you want a spotter? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, well, Marlin's I, really good. Yeah, I'll just watch Marlin. Thank you. Oh, you're behind. You just cross up in it. Wrong. So you can see it's not. No, it's this not is. That bad. You just, um, this route is not the right one. You're going to want to go up high and then come down. And every time people get in there, that's when they get crossed up and mixed up and it doesn't work very good. Like a buggy would go through there any uh, direction. Uh -huh. The more bear did it. Yep, Tucker sure did. So. You can walk this, basically. Against my will. Be careful with your portal panel. Okay. Just coming four wheel drive. You should be able to turn. Perfect. Now you can back up. You can back up now. Passenger, all the way passenger. Now start turning and you have to climb this so be, to be able to back down later. Come up, come up, come up, come up, come up, come up, come up. Come up, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Okay, you're good, keep coming. Hey. Ah, you fell down. Okay. Hold on, let me hold on. You can bump it from there and you'll be able to. Good job. Good job. That was easy for you. We've made it to the top of the world. This is absolutely beautiful. You can see for miles on miles on miles. Wow. We're at the dunes, guys. So obviously for it to be super, super fun, we're gonna go into U9 and make sure that's cranked all the way up. so much fun guys honestly a huge thank you to the more crew for um giving us this tour oh lord Single night. So 
it resets, the wind resets it. Um, you can tell Matt this is his home away from home because he knows exactly where he's going. We're doing the best we can to follow him. Marlon's having a ton of fun. What do you think, babe? Oh, this is so much fun. off to the right there that's it says nasty half and it's rated a nine it's right here this is the famous San Paulo tunnel Hollow doing our very first recovery with Matt's off-road recovery and the rest of his crew. Let's see what they got. This is the uh, vehicle, aka side-by-side, -side, that we need to have recovered. So Matt is setting up the Matt's off-road recovery rope up on the side-by-side. -side. They burnt a belt, so they want the owner called um, Matt's off-road and basically wants the side-by-side -side taken to a nearby shop to get fixed. So we're out here in the middle of the dunes, helping this guy out. So this is the hookup. And I'm still in one of your guys, you just stole mine. Sound like my backpack's in there, just toss it in the more of air. It's just a burn belt, and we're just taking it down to where we can take it to Moto Zoo. Well, don't jinx it. Don't say simple yet. We're not out yet. So Jamie is going to be in the side-by-side -side filming the live action here. Marlon's driving, they're hooked up to the Morver, and Matt is going to try to go slow. He's going to have to ride the brakes. Let's get started. He did tell me that side-by-side -side recoveries are not the most exciting, only because it's fairly simple to get them out, which is kind of a good thing. What do you think? He said it's all downhill, so... Don't jinx it. We have Hefe in his Can Am. I want one so bad. We are moving. Alrighty, let's see how long it takes. It's currently 1.55 p.m. So the side by side that's getting tugged is in neutral and two wheel drive. So hopefully that aids in getting it out. Alrighty, that didn't work as planned. He is not locked. Rookie mistake! <laughs> are you locked? You are now. He was on the brakes.
change the fact that you sat on them? Uh, no, but... That's what I thought. Moving on, guys. Look at this recovery. It is the coolest recovery anyone has ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we're gonna hit this. We're gonna let those guys get all the way through it. I think we can hit about 60 miles an hour. Hear this right here. So everyone's all the way back there. They're doing about 20... 10 to 20, we'll do about 50 to 60. 50 to 60. <laughs> but I think that is that terminal loose yep. yeah that's that might be your issue you think so yeah, yeah. but it have power yeah, uh, it, it might have, have, it might have had enough power to transfer just to to turn on your lights but not just not to turn over the starter so we are on our way out my goodness I'm dirty um don't look at that guys I, we were on our way out and um, Marlon turned off the JL so that he could hop in Hefe's Can-Am and take my place and um, I got into the JL, tried to turn it on, then it wouldn't start. He went ahead and there's an issue with um, the plug to the starter, it's like broken. So they had to take um, a whole, the starter off, um, then realized that the battery terminal was loose, so reconnected that, he had to reinstall the starter it's been a mess so now he only has one bolt connected and yeah so matt came back for us in the tow rig here the flatbed so what he's doing now is since we're up and running he's just going to go ahead and load the razor up We spoke too soon guys, it, the Jeep was running fine and then we started losing power and then the brake, like the e-brake light turned on and then we just barely coasted, didn't even make it to the gas station, we're literally this far away from it. So we called Matt's Off-Road Recovery for the ultimate recovery, look at them all laughing because um, he ended up coming out and then we didn't end up needing him, he ended up picking up the side-by-side the -side, and now here we are literally probably not even a fourth of a mile away from the shop we were almost there the look of defeat here we are guys getting our very own tow from that soft road recovery here we go guys get put on the flatbed JL has been successfully put up there and we're on our way to the shop now. Thanks for picking us up, Matt. Got it, dude. <laughs> that was a pretty fast Uber. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> we made it. Our Uber brought us to the yard. And by Uber, 
I mean that guy. So this is a situation that we have going on. Everything's like flashing on and off. You got, I mean, the whole thing's going crazy. All right, Marlon is going to go ahead and undo the main battery, as you guys know or may not know. Insane? Yes. Okay, then that means that it is the- uh... It's uh, the auxiliary battery. So he went ahead and disconnected the main battery, but it's still doing all of that. So <sighs> that kind of sucks because that's kind of the tougher battery to replace and I'm pretty sure a dealer has to do it. So, all right. I know how to do it. That's you do? Like five so minutes. we should just leave it like that until it dies or what? No, no, no. I, I'm disconnecting it. You're disconnecting it right now? Oh, okay. I spoke too soon then. So my husband, my beloved husband, is going to go ahead and undo the auxiliary battery. He already did the main one. Hopefully that'll um, shut it off. I don't know. Are, is that something that we can take to like an auto parts and have yeah. checked out or what? It might just have to be replaced entirely. So, but thank God we have the two door here, two door JK for the win. Um, all this electrical stuff, that's some JL problems. So see, I don't have to deal with that. A quick update guys. We basically replaced the battery, the auxiliary battery, and we left the Jeep at the yard. The next day we went there and the Jeep was doing exactly the same. We talked to Kevin from Lightbride and he told us that we don't even need this auxiliary battery. This is just for the start stop function on the Jeep. So he told us just take it off and connect it to the main battery. So this is the positive and the negative terminal is this one here. Guys, we don't recommend doing this. This is just what we did and you can do it if you want to, but we don't recommend it. Well, yeah, guys, the Jeep is good to go now. Hey, we're gonna be attempting the Rattlesnake Gulch out here in Utah. As our tour guides, we have Matt. <laughs> Let's do this. Colt. <laughs> and another Matt. Como esta? Muy bien. Si? made it past a couple water crossings I think five to be exact and we actually drove um, I don't know 20 30 feet in a water crossing to get to the next part of the trail Matt from Matt's off road recovery says that this trail is very similar to Fordyce or uh, the Rubicon trail I should say so a lot of small rocks that you do have to kind of pay attention so that you don't dip out so Matt says this is the place that our friend George submarined his brand new JL. So this is the place that George submarined his Jeep. No way. Yep. You're late for the party, but we had more here. water then, like maybe maybe 12 or 14 inches of water more. And you just can't go by those rocks. You know that there's a hole. Don't there. tell yeah. him that. The line is to the left. Oh, okay. you want to stay close to those rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I'll take the line you take. Yeah, we're going to follow you. Okay. You're the only one of 42, so that's not fair. I know all about following a rear steer buggy on 42s. I did it all over Tennessee for a couple days. I really, yeah. really like it. We're, I think we're through eight or nine of our 50 water crossings. So it is a long trail. So were some of the water crossings dry or no? They're they're always gonna have water. Yeah. Okay. Are you guys having fun? No. Super easy, you got this. Think about this trail so far. I think it's pretty awesome. Lots of water, lots of trees, lots of canyons. Are we are we in Utah? <laughs> He's so different to other trails just yeah. because of the water crossing. Yeah. That's why I wanted to show this to you guys because Everybody knows Sand Hollow. You all have been there and seen the trails. And this is like right by Sand Hollow and 
totally different place. Just like 15 minutes away, right? Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Are you liking it? Yeah. It's see. Awesome. I'm ready to see some rattlesnakes. Yeah, me too. They're up here. Up Hold there. On. Look at this, guys. There's so many different types of rocks here. I love it. So we've reached probably my favorite place up until now. We're in the shade of the canyon, the rock over here. We have a bunch of razors parked up here. Let me, ooh, it gets kinda, try not to get completely soaked. You can tell here, a bunch of razors. I'm gonna try to make my way over there without completely getting soaked. Oh, where's the thing? Oh, he's getting ready. Cold. All right, cannonball time. Cannonball? I'll hit my what thing? my coccyx. <laughs> Ooh, those legs. Super sexy. <laughs> Just wait till you see my arm. Oh, look at that farmer's tan in the house. He's doing this like a Tennessee man that wouldn't dry out if he got all wet. <laughs> I don't think you should here. jump in, man. Nah. Just, just, the just, rock ledge here just slide in. Fuck your legs. Go, Luna. Yeah? I thought this was the desert. Yeah. Our water evaporates so fast, it's always cool. So the water's always at least 20 degrees cooler. Do you think it'll dry off air. relatively fast? Yeah, it's still dry fast. Okay. You gonna jump? Yeah, I'm short. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, a couple way out. That was incredibly cold guys. I had a quick wardrobe change. Thank you to the Moore crew for saving my life so I don't have to uh, drive around with a sopping wet t-shirt. So I think that we've gone through, I don't know, probably like 20 water crossings. There's supposed to be, I've heard anywhere between 45 and 50. Matt keeps giving me a different number every time. Uh, right now, I think because of the time of the year, it's extremely dusty. So if you're thinking about doing uh, this trail, which is the Rattlesnake Canyon, I would definitely advise either doing it with full doors, windows, hardtop, or wearing a buff, because um, it's it's definitely dusty out here, guys. Another water crossing, yay! Get those tires wet so that um, it's not so dusty, I think, when yep. you're doing this with wet tires. Here we go. Look how beautiful, stunning waterfall. Almost completely dry guys pants are almost dry we stopped for lunch um, next to this beautiful waterfall you can there's Marlin walking through the top of the waterfall it's completely stunning we met up with the razors again guess they're having lunch up top here also lunch was awesome guys we are ready to head out that is it for the rattlesnake canyon trail 
uh, Jamie counted and it was exactly 40 water crossings. I guessed wrong, I said about 27, Josh said 27, but Colt guessed right. He said exactly 40 and that's the number. I'm here with Matt from Matt's Off-Road Recovery and he is taking us on a wild ride today. Where are we going, Matt? We're taking the State Road Trail at Mount Carmel. It's a really short, um, scenic trail that gets really intense like right at the end. That's exactly what we need. All right, guys, let's go. All right, guys, so <clears throat> I was told that the trail doesn't even have a name. Um, Paul from Fab Rats, this is like his home turf. He told us basically he calls it the State Road Trail because it's right next to the State Road. Climate-wise, very similar to when we went and did um, Rubicon Trail out in California, but more so Fordyce up North California area-ish. Very arid still, a lot of the same plants that you see um, in Southern Utah, Southern Utah, right? Yep. Um, where we were, or where we are in the hurricane. So we're about an hour away um, in Mount Carmel. I uh, was told the population is about 2,500, uh, give or take. So very small, close-knit community. We were out there, we went to the car show, and then we decided to hit some trails. So, so far, loving this. Love, I mean, right now, we just, I don't know if you can take a look over there. There's a bunch of different colored rock. It's awesome. But I'm loving it. I can totally see myself living out here. Okay, so the terrain's changing a bit, guys. It's going from sandy to uh, rocky. Right about there. You can see Matt's in the banana going up first. Uh, his wife, Jamie's in the Morver. And so I'm going to just see how Jamie does it. Um, okay, looks pretty good. I believe she was in two wheel drive up until now. So she's probably um, going ahead and putting that into four low or four high just to be able to, I mean, it's not even that um, steep, but I think the good stuff starts about now. So the scenery is changing once again. So we went a small little portion on the, that red rock now we're back on the sand that you guys see here and then I believe we're dropping down to come back up on the, that red rock. So we are at the bottom of this mini canyon and you can tell the sand is completely white, almost looks like beach sand. So guys, I'm assuming that when it starts raining here, this is going to flood and fill up very quickly. Um, so you're going to have to get out but it's beautiful it's crazy like I, I don't even know what to call this the bottom of the ravine the bottom of the canyon creek bed I don't know but like yeah but just let us know in the comments below the the sand shelf here is I mean the water definitely rises all the way up this is this is awesome so beautiful so for the longer vehicles they are having to do some three-point turn type maneuvers because you got to go straight up over there so we got to the first obstacle guys some people are getting out um, that are with Matt Marlon is out of the Jeep he's gonna go ahead and get a shot for you guys of what it looks like doesn't look too crazy it's just more of that red rock okay you're gonna you're gonna need to bump it right. for for about two and a half feet and then okay. kind of get back off of it <laughs> Power break it and, and let it go. I want you to put your front wheel right up here. Be careful, that's it. Okay, that way. Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, back, uh, back it up just a little. And for those that I know are going to ask eventually, I will answer for you. Today we are in the two-door, not the JL, for two reasons. One, this the JK drives um, on the road. It's not on stickies. It's on the MTO2 paths. Um, so they're DOT. The JL's on the stickies. This was about an hour drive, so we didn't want to put all those miles on the JL. And then yesterday we did also have problems with the auxiliary battery. Um, I'll insert the 
the clip here, but basically everything, it was like Christmas, lighting up, lighting off. Marlon disconnected the main battery and it was still doing it, which led him to believe it was the aux one. So he um, completely undid that. He took it to Napa last night before dinner and they did confirm that the battery was bad. He was able to get a new one um, for like 150 bucks. Um, pretty expensive for a little tiny battery, but what are you gonna do? So Jamie is about to bump it. She's backed up. She's getting a position. Matt is making sure that she's in a good place and she's just going to give it a small bump. But basically the wheelbase of the Morver is she's climbing in the front and climbing in the rear, which is not allowing her really to get anywhere. I honestly don't think that we even really aired down enough to be on this trail. It's not a big deal, guys. Um, I think that everyone is, we were driving here, so everyone's basically between 12 and 15. We probably should have lowered to about 10, some people eight, um, but it's gonna be fine. We're gonna get through it. It's gonna be a good day. You have to bump it. Yeah, she had it. Same thing, little more throttle. You stop, keep going, keep going, you're fine, you're fine. And don't stop. Wait. Okay, baby stop. Okay. Driver now. You're good, you're good. <laughs> that was real close. Yeah. Okay, keep coming, keep coming. Don't stop. Okay, you're good. Keep coming. Keep coming. Okay, right, now, okay, wait, 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 wait. This is going to be scary now for you. I'm gonna have her park right here. Uh-huh. Cause, Cause he, he might, might have, have to, to get winched up. Oh, okay, okay. So pull up. Yeah, pull, pull up. up like 10 more feet. Okay. Thank you for filming. I finally got my legs back. Good I job! Just, I just lost the bet. <laughs> wow. <laughs> A chance to film but matt was in my passenger seat on the way up hopefully marlon got the shot but that was honestly really easy marlon was making it sound like it was going to be this crazy thing after i think doing the you gotta be nuts um obstacle on the jail that was or in the jail that was nothing that was honestly i didn't even have to go that fast i would have crawled it all right so i think that obstacle supposedly the whole thing the state road trail is a level six um, because of that one obstacle right there and then that little climb that's kind of steep climb-ish after the obstacle the guy behind me in the xj major shout out to him open open 33 so if you have an xj or a similar wheelbase vehicle open open uniform or obviously ford or jk um no or jl jl2 correct um JL2 or even a Gladiator. Yeah. Really anything longer than a hundred inch wheelbase. Open, open, you will be fine. Uh, and even the dirt bikes went up, which I, I don't know anything about dirt bikes, so that's a little different territory. Uh, guys, I made a mistake by not wearing long sleeves. Marlon's wearing long sleeves and um, he definitely had the right idea. I wore our short sleeve shirts and I know what you're thinking guys. You want to know where you can get these awesome t-shirts? Check out our website offroadandchill.com. We have both 
uh, for sale, and if they're not uh, currently available, they will be available on pre-order. So check it out, guys. Hopefully you like this video. We're on to the trail number two here um, around Mar Mount Carmel, so stay tuned for the next video. Bye.